Good morning, folks. Six Nations 2022. Italy scoreless against England. 33 points to nil. It's a bit of a weird game in that Italy had some chances, couldn't score them, gave away a few soft tries. But it's a you know, bonus point win for England, so kind of to be expected. I'm a little bit disappointed that Italy were nilled, but if you're an England fan, you'd certainly be happy with the way your defence held. Although, if you're an Italian fan, you're probably shaking your head, because I certainly was at uh, some of the errors, and um, felt for Kira Growley watching in the stands, to be honest, as he just stared off into the distance. But anyway, we'll go through some of the key events, some of the stats, and you guys can give me any thoughts on the game. Um, interestingly, Italy had the first chance to kind of maul it up, but was stopped pretty handily by England, and... Uh, I think they'll be pretty chuffed with how their mall defense went. Uh, the Italian set plays, mall time, line-out time, certainly need a bit more work, I think you'd have to say. Given how many guys are from Benetton, it's a little bit disappointing. They don't seem to be more on the same page. But anyway, um, England had their first chance also snuffed out when, um, when Malins knocked it on. Italy kind of hoofed it upfield, but it didn't take too long for the first try. Uh, Marcus Smith, who ends up getting man of the match. England have to work for it. This is one of their kind of better work tries. They go through 10 phases, and eventually they head on down the left wing. Um, Malins was the one on the left wing, and uh, Smith ends up finishing it off with a good conversion as well. So, um, yeah, 7 points to nil early uh, for England. Italy did, again, start to look a little bit more dangerous. There was one play where they put, I think it was a line-up move, a little dinking kick over the top. They gathered it offloads and um, it kind of takes a good read or maybe a bad pass. Um, but Itoje is the man who ends up kind of being the beneficiary of a uh, loose Italian pass. So he shuts that one down. But at that moment, you're thinking, man, if Italy can keep chucking it around and, you know, varying things up, maybe, maybe they might end up getting something going forward. Doesn't end up going that way. Um, 19 minutes, England end up going through a lot of phases in the Italian 22. Uh, eventually... They, um, they do grind them down and George goes over for his try. Uh, that one was... Was that the one that he scored out wide? Because he gets two in this game. Um, unfortunately for, for Jack Knoll, he goes off with an HIA pretty early as well, which is, as I said, unfortunate because it's been a while since we've seen him start for England. HIA and um, yeah, Daly has to fill in for, I don't know, 60 minutes. So yeah, pretty pretty hard for Jack Knoll. Felt for him because he never really got any chance last week and then this week, not a whole lot more. Um, 30 minutes, it looks like Itoje has gone over for a try. That one was from a from a nice line-out move. Uh, Maul initially gets stopped, which is, uh, I guess, a bit of credit to the Italian defense. Uh, but Itoje kind of manages to leap over, but they go back and say that Ezekwe obstructed the initial kind of Maul contact with the ball carry from the defenders. So, um, yeah, that's one that the referees have kind of been focusing on at least in the last six i want to say six to 12 months so yeah uh england would kind of clean that up a bit later but that one was chalked off so italy kind of got out of jail it's still 14 nil um and england did go close on 36 minutes but uh, i would say credit to the italian defense they were looking pretty knackered but uh england kept knocking on the door and couldn't quite couldn't quite break through. So, um, yeah, it was looking like it's going to go into half time at 14-0, um, at which is not too bad in the scheme of things. Especially when, like, the Italian guys win a scrum penalty in their own 22 and they're celebrating like they won the game because they know the pressure they've been under. They finally get to exit. So uh, that was maybe the best moment of the game for them. Um, but unfortunately for them, they don't go into the sheds at 14-0. Because uh, George gets another try. This is the one where he finishes out wide. Um, it's a high ball. And it's a soft one from Italy, to be honest. It's a high ball. Ioanni manages to knock it backwards and Varney cleans it up. But Varney ends up passing it to Jamie George. England go through some phases. And um, yeah, eventually George is able to go over on the right wing. So... Yeah, like, I don't feel like that's the kind of try that other teams are going to cough up. But i still got to give credit to England for making the most of the opportunity, if you know what I mean. So, 
That's why I say this game is a little bit weird in that regard. Um, Halftime stats, it's pretty much all England, to be fair. The fact that they're only up 21-0 uh, is probably a bit credit to the Italian defense, but also some question marks about the way the English were attacking. Run meters is 3-12 to 106, so they're dominating. Possession 69-31, territory 54-46, and the Italians have been under the pump from the ref. Penalties considered as 8-3. to Um... Italians have made 110 tackles to England's 32. So, yeah, man, I guess 21 nils are okay. Three try lead, you're one away from a bonus point. Um, as I said, the Italian defense was holding just barely at times, but they were they were holding. So, yeah, 21 nil half time. Second half, um, it's a soft try, I think, from an Italian point of view, but maybe a good English set play. 44 minutes, it's a scrum in center field in the Italian 22, which is pretty hard to defend. And, um, yeah, England send Daly over for a try. They basically just spun it wide. I mean, Smith's got some good hands, and he, as I said, he gets man of the match. So it just seems a bit easy. I reckon if the Italians are reviewing it, they'll probably be not too pleased with that one. But, you know, when a set play works out as the attacking team, you'd be pretty pretty happy with how, how it went. Um, 50 minutes, the Italians do go through... Uh, some phases, they get advantage, Garbisi chips it over, it's a little bit too big, but they're, they're still unable to score, I think they end up, they go for a line out, and then they miss the line out, they end up conceding a penalty, and England get out of dodge, um, Negri goes off on a stretcher, so kind of like Noel, um, it's never good to see that kind of thing, but he goes off after only kind of making a, a brief cameo, hope he's alright, um, Fiverr, the, the replacement hooker, goes close from a line-out move where they kind of, you know, throw it in short and back to the hooker. He goes up the blind side. Close, but he's into touch. It's maybe one of the closest ones they got for the whole game. And then what ensues from maybe that moment onwards is a fair bit of Italian pressure and just unable to to get over the English line for whatever reason. So you do have to give credit to England's defense. It, Italy's attack, I've said it before, I mean, I looked at the stats last year, and it was um, pretty blunt. It did look pretty blunt at times. Like, they had a six-meter line-out, which they ended up losing. But England conceded a scrum uh, breakdown penalty immediately afterwards. So Italy get a second chance. And then Cowan Dickey won a breakdown penalty. Um, Italy on 71 had another chance, but they lose the line-out. It was in good attacking position. And then 73... Italy, again, knock on a high ball. I think that was Marin, was it? The replacement fullback. Oh, that's only like a second game. And um, basically, from that opportunity out of nowhere, England end up sending Sinclair over after a few phases. So, I don't know that that kind of high ball chance is the one England will get against other teams. Like I said, although, you know, France considered a really soft try from the kickoff against Ireland yesterday, so you never know. You've got to still be able to finish it. But, yeah, I do feel like there were some well-worked tries from England, but also a couple that were pretty soft. So, um, yeah, it's a weird game. 77 minutes, Italy had, like, one last chance. They opted for a scrum after going for the line-out a few times. The scrum is well in English territory in the 22, and then, like, Pettinelli just knocks it on at the base of the scrum, can't get it out from his feet. Like, really, really, really frustrating watch. Yeah, they just couldn't get anything going with ball in hand. So, yeah, it's not like they didn't have some some chances in the second half. Much more compared to the first half anyway. But good for England's defense to get a bit of practice in, I guess, in the second half. And they, they kept them to nil, so credit to them. Um, Slade almost had a try of the death as well, but they ruled that he knocked it on over the line. So nothing doing. So Italy could have conceded 40, which would have been really embarrassing. Like 33 is kind of that awkward, awkward zone, but... 40, I mean, 33 is still a bit of a hiding, but 40 would have been truly embarrassing. Um, run meters finished 287 to 638, so England dominates there. Um, possession and territory um, have a bit of a shift, because remember I talked about the first half being all England. Second half, Italy have 52% possession, but 71% territory. So they were really, you know, down England's half, but come away with nothing. Clean breaks is 9-5 to five to England. Defenders beaten is 19-10 to 10 to England. Both sides will not like this stat. Turnovers conceded is 13 by Italy, 20 by England. So a bit messy. The game got a bit scrappy, you'd have to say. 
Um, Lineouts, neither side is perfect. Italy, 17 from 20. Yeah, England, 15 from 17. So neither of them's shocking. But both would like to improve, obviously. Both sides tackle at 91%. Italy have to make more, 181 to 98. Um, penalties considered, finish is 12 apiece. So as I said, Italy were able to exert a bit of pressure in the second half, but absolutely not clinical at all. Um, Ioanni, the, the winger, makes 89 run meters. He gets two clean breaks and two defenders beaten. He's far and away. More than double, I think, the next best Italian ball carrier. Lamaro makes 19 out of 20 tackle, uh, tackles, which is um, a pretty good shift from the captain. Uh, he always kind of leads from the front in that regard. Stewart, 120 run meters, clean break, and a defender beat. Don Brandt, I didn't feel like he was that ever present, but 74 run meters and 10 from 10 tackles is a huge shift. Malins has a couple of try assists. Smith gets a try assist and a try. So, yeah, some slick moves. A couple of soft ones, but yeah, as I said, it's just kind of one of those weird games where I think England were okay without being fantastic, and Italy were okay without being too terrible, but on attack, they really were frustrating. So there you go. Um, England are home to Wales in a couple of weeks, and Italy are away to uh, Ireland. So it'll be nice for England to get home because they've started on the road. And um, we'll see what they can do. You guys let me know your thoughts on the game. If you want England rugby gear, they're having a sale for the next few hours anyway, like 15% off. Check it out, England rugby gear. Link in the description, affiliate of the channel. Happy days. But yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts. Are you blown away by England's performance? Did you think it was just kind of average? Frustrated by Italy as me? Well, I mean, there were some positive signs from their defense. But as I said, I was left kind of shaking my head. Uh, a little too often for my liking. But anyway, you guys have any thoughts? And I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.